Let us see the use case on analyzing the NHL game data. The data is available as a part of this specific URL. I have downloaded the data and uploaded as a part of HDFS. I'm going to use the Spark shell to read the data, create the data frame. And from the data frame, I am going to create a table. And from the table, I can use any SQL query. And from the Spark SQL shell, I can analyze the query. And uh, we can retain the data. And uh, we can use the same data for any future reference. We can use it. So the data that is downloaded from the uh, data source, it has n number of CSV file. So we have all the CSV file. And this is the high level information on what are all the columns available within it. And the CSV file, it does have the header as well. So these are all the relation, how the columns are related between each other. And all the data is added within the HDFS location over here. I'm going to use this specific data and read that as a data frame from my Spark shell. I have the Spark shell. I'm going to use the data. I'm going to use the Spark session and read the CSV file format and provide the option to infer the schema automatically and uh, provide the option saying it has a header and uh, mention the location where the uh, data is available. So the data is available in this specific location. The data would be read and it would provide me a data frame. I would cache the data frame so that any further processing it's going to be much faster. And as we discussed earlier, cache it's a lazy operation. Whenever I take any action, that only it will get cached. Now I'm going to create a temporary view and call that as a temp game the data frame dot create or replace temp view and give a name to it i can see the schema what is the schema about this particular data frame what are all the columns available and i can see the schema in more structured form using the option print schema the data frame dot print schema would give me the data frame in more structured form i'm going to create a table within the database nhl using this specific temporary view that we have created so I'm going to create a table. I'm going to use the Spark session dot SQL and uh, provide the SQL command. I'm going to create a table as it is available within the temp view so that it would get persisted and it would get added into the meta store as well. So it's going to create the meta store and store the data in the specific location as mentioned within the command prompt. What's the default location for the warehouse? Now I can get into the Spark SQL shell and to see this specific table details. The same way how we created the data frame and from the data frame creating the temporary view, we can create all the other tables as well. So this is how the commands would look like. I'll be uploading the entire command so that you can practice with the same command option. So I would mention the CSV file location for each and every CSV file and that would create the data frame. And the corresponding data frame, what I would be doing from the data frame, I would be creating the temporary view. I'll be creating the corresponding temporary view for each of the data frame. And from the temporary view, I'll be creating the table. The corresponding table would get created. For each of the temporary view, I'll be creating the table using the SQL command. I have already created all these tables and we can check the tables available within this specific database. I do have all the tables and I can use this specific table to do any query that I want. So before doing the query analysis, I'm going to cache all the tables. All the tables have been cached. We can verify that within the web UI as well. So I have the Spark SQL web UI and within the storage, we can check what are all the data and how many partitions it created. The entire data is available in memory. So basically the low level API, the RDD is corresponding to all these data would be available within the memory. Any SQL query that I'm going to use against this data would be much faster. I'm going to fire a query against the player info table. I'm going to check for each nationality, how many players do I have? The retrieval is going to be very fast and quick. As the data is available within the memory, the retrieval will be much faster. And we can check what is the job that satisfied that specific requirement and how many stages it got executed and what are all the queries that got executed? What is the timeline? So all those informations we can get from here. So there were three workers, the work got distributed across all the three workers and it got executed. By default, the shuffle partitions is 200. So it's going to execute with 200 tasks. That's the default configuration of Spark. 
Let's do another query. I'm going to get the player ID and the how many saves, the goal saves they made. I'm going to get the data from this specific table, the goalie statistics. I'm going to group all the data based on the player so that each player, how many goals they had saved or each goalie, how many goals they had saved. And I have printed that in the descending order. So this is the goalie ID. Now I can make a join with the other table that is the player info table and I can get their names as well. Let me do another query. So I'm going to get the player ID, player name and the nationality and how many saves they made. And I'm going to do the join between these two tables that is the goalie statistics and the player info. I'm going to group all the data based on the player ID and get the data in the descending order. As the data is in memory, we do have millions of data within this player info and this uh, goalie uh, statistics but the retrieval is going to be much faster and quicker as the data is available within the memory and for each and every query as we discussed we can check what are all the jobs that got executed and how it obtained the result for example the last query it executed with the three different jobs so these are all the job id the details about the job can be found by clicking that specific link and we can check the details like how it got executed and why it skipped any stage if already available within the cache it would be skipping it so all the information the statistics about various jobs we can find over here and how it is going to execute this specific query i can get the information by providing the explain command explain will give me the plan on how it is going to achieve this specific result so what is the physical plan what is the logical plan it's going to provide the plan on how to obtain the result for this specific query so in the summary we loaded all the data which was available as a csv file into the hdfs and from hdfs we created a data frame and from data frame we created the temporary table and from temporary table we created the actual table and all the data would be maintained within the data warehouse location that we can check over here i can describe any table that i want so this is the hdfs location all the data for this specific table would be stored in this specific location and uh, any data that i want to load i can load over here here i am not going to get the warning of i am using a csv file because we loaded the data from the data frame and automatically spark would take care of it but as a part of this particular lecture the command that i am using it would be uploaded so directly as it is by updating only the path of your hdfs location as well as the database names you can execute the same command as it is